Do you believe in magic? In fantasies, flying fishes, and dancing flowers? Oh, but you must! For only when you believe it will you see it. Are you ready then? Let's begin with the story of Ida and her dancing flowers. It all starts in the town of Quicksville, a place where magic lives. Toys, trees, houses, even the furniture, all comes alive here. But there is a catch here now, for those who believe in magic are the only ones who can see it. Right at the center of Quicksville, in a big house, lived Ida. Ida was a sweet little girl who loved her flowers. The roses, the carnations, the daffodils, the tulips. Those were her real friends. But Ida never smiled. The fresh fragrance from the flowers, the sunshine, the morning dew, all tried hard, but they all failed. She talked to her flowers. She tendered them with care. She watered them every day, and yet, she never smiled. Ida loved to draw. Her father loved Ida. He wanted his beautiful daughter to smile. He arranged for lessons in art in their own house. All the young and bright minds of Quicksville went there to learn art. Among them was Henry. Now, Henry was a young boy who believed in magic. He talked to the trees and bushes. Clouds used to come to earth only to shower him with rain. Nobody believed in his stories, but that never stopped Henry. One fine day... What are you doing there, Henry? Oh, I am glad you asked. Look at this! What is wrong with you? This is horrible! Do you even know what you've drawn? Yeah? Here, this is a man hanging from the gallows. He is holding a heart in his hand to show that he had stolen people's hearts away. I think that is rather interesting. Interesting? This boy is crazy! The other day he says a shooting star is when a star leaves the sky and goes looking out for love. <laughs> Is that true for the stars? Oh, of course not! Enough of this nonsense now! How many times have I asked you to stop spreading lies, Henry? With all due respect, sir, isn't imagination a child's way to learn things? Great lessons can be learned by nurturing their fantasies. Are you teaching me how to teach, madam? Uh, no, I'm only... That's enough now! I am not lying, you see? A beautiful star told me herself! The pen in Henry's hand nodded excitedly. But sadly, Cherry didn't believe in magic. And so she didn't see. We are getting late to start our art lessons here. Now, where is that girl who never smiles? Ida! Oh no! My flowers! I don't know what happened to them! Look! Why are you always worrying? Haven't you learned to smile? But there is nothing to smile for! Look at my flowers! Oh! How silly! They are of course withering! With a what? Withering! This means that they are dying! Oh, good golly! I was better off as a pianist! Now, now, that's only nature. Everything has to die. Now keep them aside and let's start with our lesson for today. But Ida was in no mood to draw. She looked at her flowers sadly. What did I do for you to die? Why can't there be one reason to be happy? What should I have done to save you? Don't you listen to him, Ida. They are not dead. They are only tired from all the dancing. D dancing Well, yes. Don't you know the castle outside the gates of the city? The summer house for our king? They all go there in the night to dance. I was at the castle yesterday. There was not a single flower or a leaf on the tree. 
They don't stay there in the day, for the castle keeper is not nice to them. He doesn't talk to them or tender them with care. They go there to dance, for they have a big place there to slide around. But they have to be careful about the castle keeper who goes around the palace in the night. One flower is always guarding the door. As soon as he hears his footsteps, he tells the other dancing lot. They all hide wherever they can. So, when the castle keeper enters, he only smells a bunch of flowers and sees nothing. Really? Yes, yes. Then, after the ball, they all go back to wherever they came from. And then, they wait for the night again. Wait, are you telling the truth? I want to see, but I can't go to the castle in the night. What do I do? Hmm, let me think. I have a plan. Do you promise to believe me, Ida? Because my plan will let you see the dancing flowers only if you promise to believe. Um, okay. Great. When you go to sleep tonight, close the door of your toy room. That way, they cannot leave. They will then dance in your toy room. But remember to make plenty of space for them to let them sway without bumping into your furniture. You know how they dance at a ball, right? <laughs> Henry, what on earth are you doing? He was showing me how flowers dance. Dancing flowers? Mercy me! How can anyone stuff a child's head with such nonsense, stupid fantasy? No more of this flower dancing story now. After the class, Ida quickly went back to her room. Oh, hello, Sophie. Hope you slept fine. Um, sorry, Sophie, but you will have to sleep somewhere else tonight. These flowers need more care. They are tired. Ida could swear she saw Sophie's face turn blue. But who would believe that a doll had feelings? After all, isn't what everyone believes in supposed to be the truth? Sleep well now, okay? And if you go to dance, don't tire yourselves much. The flowers didn't respond to Ida, but she well knew that they were listening to her. That night, Ida couldn't sleep for a long time. She remembered everything Henry told her. She had locked the door to her toy room. She didn't want her flowers to escape. She didn't want them to get into any trouble. But more than that, she wanted to see them dance. And she believed she would. Oh, please let me see the flowers dance. Please! Finally, sleep came. What? What is that noise? <gasps> it must be the flowers! They are dancing! I must go and watch. And there they all were. The roses, the daffodils, the carnations, everyone. Oh, what a splendid view it was. The flowers from all the vases of her room swayed and moved across the floor. Lily was playing the piano. After watching the flowers, Ida's toys also couldn't hold back. Woo! This is the best night of my life! All was well when suddenly the long broomstick screamed. How can anyone stuff a child's head with such nonsense, stupid fantasy? Why, have you seen my moose? I didn't even know I could move like that. <laughs> Ida couldn't move a limb. She was surprised beyond belief. She looked for her ill flowers. She wanted them to also start dancing. But then she wasn't the only one who wished that. Hey, you! Won't you dance? I don't feel very well. Come on now. Dance will make you feel better. 
Ah, oh, yes. Let us go dance, Brenda. Yes. Let us enjoy while we can. Oh, their color has almost faded. And yet, look how happy they are. We have so much to learn from these flowers. Just then, there was a knock from inside Ida's drawer. The chimney sweeper opened the drawer to find Sophie inside it. Ugh, I thought I would never get out of there. It is so dark inside. What is going on here? We are all having a ball. It's a party. A party? Well, why did anyone invite me? Oh, um, I am inviting you now. Will you dance with me? Oh, boy. You aim so high. Huh. Sophie wanted a handsome flower to ask her for a dance. But all the flowers were dancing and singing. Nobody had time to look at Sophie. She then sat upon the open drawer. Maybe she is invisible to all, she thought. And yet, nobody came. Finally, she decided to enter the dance all by herself. But... Are you okay? Are you hurt? Oh, you. Isn't there a handsome man to come help me up? Go away. I'm fine. Oh, but please let us. Why are you being so polite to me? Well, of course. You gave us your bed. That was very generous of you. Oh, um, yeah. You all are really nice. You can keep my bed. I won't complain. That's really sweet. But we can't use it. We will be gone by tomorrow. No! Please don't go. We can't stay, dear. Do a thing, will you? Ask Ida to bury us in the garden so that we can come back again every year. I will surely tell her. Ah! Oh, what must have become of my flowers? Oh, don't you worry. You still look as pretty as ever. Ida looked out at the garden, and oh, what a wonder. She smiled the most beautiful smile. Now that she believed in magic, Ida knew what she had to do. Ida could now talk to the sun and the moon. She sang with the spoons and danced with the plants. For now that she believed in magic, magic is what she saw everywhere. The flowers too kept their promise. They came to Ida year after year. Legend has it, the town of Quicksville still has flowers that dance throughout the night. Ida's flowers, who brought magic to Quicksville and a smile to little Ida.